Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar We'll have a look at the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles And we'll finish up having a look at the 5 day precipitation and temperature from the UK Met Office run Now we do have quite a miserable day, um, it, it's quite a miserable day out there at the moment with heavy rain quite widely It is clearing for some areas but for quite a lot uh, of people it's very cloudy with light to moderate rain yeah not a great start to march but we do have high pressure potentially coming in over the next uh, few days as we start to build a scandinavian high potentially turning things much colder um, and we'll see the uncertainty with that uh, in the middle of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description also do check out channel membership that links in the description as well so if we do have a look at the live radar, you can see this big band of rain we do have currently over the spine of England into Scotland. Now it rained a lot yesterday in central southern England, and as we head over the course of the evening, that rain is going to slowly push northwards and eastwards. It is losing its intensity and um, how much it's sort of widespread, but it is still lingering with moderate rain uh, and some heavier bursts potentially in there as well. In the far south and southwest, it is slowly clearing, but we are still seeing some patchy, uh, drizzly light rain with still thicker cloud and elsewhere just a lot of showers. Um, you'll be lucky over the next sort of 12 to 24 hours not seeing any of this rain move through. Now, if we do put on a, a different layer, um, you can see if we go to the past 24 hour precipitation, um, you can see we do have, if we do get it to load, you can see pretty much all areas in England, Wales, um, especially in the south really, have seen heavy rain over the last 24 hours. Um, heaviest rain, of course, along central southern England, but you can just see everywhere really has seen a good 5 to 10 millimetres of rain. Nothing that should cause too much disruption really in terms of surface water flooding. Could be some river flooding over the coming days in a few areas, but I'm not expecting anything too major. Uh, but it just really has been pretty miserable for the start of March. Uh, but as I said, with that Scandinavian high building in, which is actually the reason why these weather fronts are being so slow when they're moving through, as that does build in, it should bring things a little bit uh, more settled, but of course, much colder. So we do now have a look at the GFS operational run. You can see the weather fronts are under the higher pressure. They're sort of getting squeezed away. Um, you see this high pressure building up towards Scandinavia. And as this high pressure lobe sort of builds, you can see we start to veer the wind in from the east by the weekend. If you look at these upper air temperatures, you can see that much colder air masses are towards our east. We're not putting anything majorly cold in yet, but cold enough to give overnight frost and temperatures around or maybe slightly below average. And of course, coming for cold North Sea, where the current sea surface temperatures are only sort of five to seven degrees, it will feel pretty chilly. Now, beyond that, the high pressure tries to hold on. And you can see we do see a burst of much cold air coming in from the Arctic across Eastern Europe and towards the UK. But on this latest GFS run, it doesn't quite make it all the way there. However, we do see a very interesting pattern with a bit of a sliding channel low pressure system. You can see that just spinning up in the Bay of Biscay, heading up towards the channel and wrapping around with colder air on its northern edge. This would be a real snowmaker um, in just over a week's time. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's very localised system, so I very much doubt it comes off like this, but this is one scenario, and this is the sort of thing we can see when we have a Scandinavian block to our northeast. And if we do zoom into the United Kingdom, look, you can see that cold air, minus 6 to minus 8 degrees at NGFT HPA, cold enough for widespread snowfall. And you can see that big temperature contrast, and you see those weather fronts, that's where they'd be positioned along sort of the minus 5 line there. So central southern England could get buried in snow from this sort of scenario, because again, you look at the 2 metre temperatures, widely low single digits, and again, have a look at the dew points, widely below freezing. So all precipitation falling out of the sky will be of a wintry nature. So we do zoom out again, have a look at the European outlook, you can see those easterly winds pushing in, but you can see that high pressure doesn't hang on. It's still there, and we still are trying to pull in an easterly wind, but you can see the purples to our west and northwest, the well, what remains of the tropospheric polar vortex up towards Greenland um, and northern Canada that is trying to bring in westerly winds. You can see the big temperature contrast between the North Atlantic and the cold air. That is fueling the jet stream, trying to push in 
low pressure in off the Atlantic against this high pressure block. Now, if we do get it in the exact right scenario, like it was showing it sort of day eight, day nine, we could see those low pressure systems producing snowfall. But you can see a scenario like this where we still have a Skazaven high, um, a negative NAO, um, and even probably a negative AO as well, but we're actually pulling in quite mild southerly winds and you could even see maybe some heat wave like conditions if we did get the exact right um uh, the right orientation of the high pressure low pressure which we're not seeing here but could see potentially in the long term right towards the end the problems remain with this scandinavian block so it doesn't look like it's going anywhere really but as we head towards the middle of March, cold air to our north is decreasing, so it becomes less and less likely we see anything too severely cold. Um, and generally, although high pressure is dominating towards Scandinavia, it could be quite an uh, unsettled scenario if we do see these low pressures running in off the Atlantic. Because it would be similar to what we have now with low pressure, with the precipitation, moisture, coming up against high pressure, slowing down, and just dumping all its rainfall, all the moisture on top of the UK. Um, so even though we would be very much under high pressure influence, it wouldn't be particularly dry towards the surface. So that is one thing we do need to take into account. Um, but of course, with these blocking patterns, with Scandinavian highs, there can be a range of scenarios, um, all dependent on the slight positioning and orientation shift of that high pressure block. So if we do want to have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Now you can see we do build up that high pressure. But, as I said, all those purples and blues trying to push in these low-pressure systems in off the Atlantic. And that's what happens. The high-pressure gets pushed away. And we go westerly. And that high-pressure just sits over eastern Europe. Um, and you can see there's cold air going down towards Greece and Italy. We turn things quite cold there. Some late winter snowfall potentially there. And for the UK, it'll be chilly in the north, but quite mild in the south and very unsettled as well. So, GM is not hinting at anything cold on this run i do think it is a bit of an outlier of course um as we have had a consistent signal for easterly winds and as we'll see with the ensembles at the end of the video they very much are going for easterly pattern as well so i think we would disregard this gm run but it is a scenario so we can't uh, completely throw it out but at this stage i wouldn't really put too much in it if we do now have a look at the ecmwf the midnight run now you can see high pressure is building up towards scandinavia and we see that sliding low pressure systems pulling in um, and things are really quite settled for the end of this weekend and we do pull in easterly winds by the middle of next week in seven days time we're starting to pull in a bitterly cold easterly wind getting that minus 10 line in that would be really cold and you see that low pressure system running up across central southern england just out in the uh, channel depending on exact positioning it would depend where that snowfall goes but if that weather front is positioned over central southern england we'd be seeing widely five inches of snowfall or something of that extent um burying the south really um in snow before it actually does move away and we stay pretty cold and at day 10 we're seeing hints perhaps of something a bit more westerly moving into that high pressure loses um uh, loses its strength so you can see by all these runs they all are showing that high pressure building up towards scandinavia all are attempting an easterly wind you see the eastern VF probably is the most su su successful really with it um, but all towards the end of the runs are showing the breakdown in that easterly wind and more of a west to southwesterly wind coming in. Now, of course, we do have signals for easterly winds, but as we've seen this winter so far, the, uh, the tropospheric and stratospheric polar vortex have been so strong that it's been almost impossible really to get any major blocking going. So I wouldn't expect this easterly wind really to last more than maybe three to five days. And that's not, and that's really what we're seeing on the models at the moment. So we have to take that into account. Um, so I definitely think we're going to see some sort of easterly wind, but I don't think it's going to last terribly long. Um, and I do think we'll go westerly or, or southwesterly after that. But as I said, slight orientation shifts can give drastic differences in conditions. Because if we did see that high pressure hold on, that low pressure just get held out in the Atlantic. The air will be coming from the south. And if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, and look at our south towards North Africa, Spain, you can see the 10 to 15 degree isothermal temperatures in the mid to high teens, maybe even 20 degrees if we did see that come in. Again, though, I must uh, stress that only with the right orientation, which uh, can be very difficult to get. 
So if we now have a look at the ensembles, if we start with the GFS, you can see the amount of spread we have even in the next sort of five days. In around the 6th of March, you have some ensemble members going down to minus 8 to minus 10 degrees at end of the HPA. Temperatures widely in the low single digits. Others hovering around minus 2 degrees, which would be chilly, but nothing majorly cold. And beyond that, you can see there is still a consistent signal for below average in terms of upper air temperatures. But there is a big spread, and you see the operational run is a bit all over the place. It's one of the mildest runs at one, one time, around the 7th, 8th of March. Then it's one of the coldest runs around the 10th of March. So, yeah, pretty bizarre um, from the ensembles. Don't really have a clue at this stage. Um, and then in the longer term, as I said, we get that right orientation shift. We could get really balmy southerly winds. And you can see you can see that on a few of these ensemble runs, getting up to 10 to 14 degrees at 850 HPA, which, as I said, could give temperatures in the high teens, maybe even 20 degrees. Precipitation does decrease, as I've said, over the next few days. But as I said, low pressure does look like it will run back in for the middle third of March. If we do actually have a look at the midnight run, you can see a bit more certainty with the easterly wind, um, but there's been a bit of a shift of colder conditions, maybe around the 8th of 10th of March. So you can see you can't really rely on any one ensemble run. Still is the signal for easterly winds, uh, but at this stage, just going to keep an eye really on what happens. High pressure is forming at the moment, and certainty will become much clearer once that high pressure starts to dominate over the next couple of days. If you do have a look at the ECMWF run, uh, on the run, have a look at the midnight run. You can see it is colder, the Eastern AF run, generally. You can see considerably below average all the way from around the 4th, 5th of March, all the way to around the 10th, 12th of March. Some going really cold around the 8th to 12th of March, getting down to minus 10 degrees at of HPA. Now, remember, there are 50 ensemble members here, so you'd expect more to be at that colder end. And you can see maybe 5 to 10 are getting down to that cold level. So maybe 20% or as much as 20% of the ensemble members are going really cold, including the operational run. Um, but most go cold at some point. In the longer term, though, definitely does increase in temperatures to around average once again. And you can see some are going much milder. A couple are staying cold, uh, but I would definitely see the trend back to around average. And you can see precipitation signals do increase very much from around the 10th of March onwards, as it's likely we see um, low pressure run back in against the high pressure, but it really depends on how long that high pressure does hold on as to whether it's cold and um, cold and unsettled, i.e. some wintry precipitation, or whether it, that cold air gets pushed away quickly and we go milder and wet and windy in off the Atlantic. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. There's a lot of uncertainty, as ever, with with these um, northern hemisphere blocks, um, but Fingers crossed we do see something wintry, because I know a lot of people watching have been very disappointed with the winter so far, so have I. Um, it's been it's been pretty abysmal for any wintry potential. So hopefully we do see something actually go in our favour, and we see something a little bit colder, at least for a few days. So now finish up the video by having a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at the precipitation temperature over the next five days. Now you can see that precipitation moving up from the south, and you can see it does sort of head northwards and sort of disintegrate as it does we see another weather front potentially push in from the west very slowly making progress through tomorrow could provide quite a lot of precipitation all across the northwest the midlands maybe parts of wales as well for eventually it does sort of move away by the early hours of friday but then you start to see the wind veering in from the east you can start to see all these showers moving in some of wintry of nature as they do move in with that easterly wind you can see those um, uh, clearer skies under the centre of the high with precipitation on its southern edge and you can see weather fronts out in the Atlantic that is low pressure trying to push in and if we do have a look at these upper air temperatures you can see we are pushing in minus 6 to minus 8 degrees at of HPA quite widely as that low pressure does move in and if we have a look at the pressure you can see easterly winds moving in with that centre of the high up to our north and our east so UK Metal Front is going cold if you look at those temperatures, you can see pretty chilly this morning across the north, widely around or below freezing in the south with more rain, 6-7 degrees. Daytime highs today were pretty chilly really, only around 5-7 to seven degrees, but that's because we've been trapped under cloud with a lot of precipitation keeping those temperatures down. As we move through this evening, you can see temperatures widely are mid to low single digits, nothing amazingly cold though. And Thursday, you can see 10-12 to 12 degrees in the east, but we still have precipitation further westwards, 7 degrees 
to 8, maybe 9 in a few spots. Through Thursday evening, we do start to see temperatures drop away in a few spots down to around freezing across parts of Ireland, maybe Scotland, elsewhere, low single digits and a little bit higher than that under cloud. And Friday, temperatures widely 5 to 10 degrees. Some areas colder, of course, under cloud and precipitation, others turning a little bit warmer. But we do start to see colder conditions come in for the weekend. Saturday morning, widespread frost in the north and the uh, in the southwest and across parts of Ireland. Further eastwards, more cloud coming in. And you can see that cold easterly wind is starting to move in by Saturday afternoon, widely 5 to 8 degrees, so around or just below average. But Saturday night into Sunday, widely temperatures once again very cold in the north and across Ireland and in the west. Further eastward, still 3, 4, 5 degrees, that's what hanging on to cloud. But you look at those daytime temperatures on Sunday, widely 5 to 7 degrees. But let me tell you that it's going to be feeling a lot colder than that with the easterly wind coming in. Could feel only around freezing. And you look by early hours of Monday, again, cloud keeping those temperatures up in the far east. But where we see clear skies, widely dropping to around freezing or well below freezing. So looking cold this weekend. And it does look like the coldest weather will be arriving in the early early uh, early part of next working week so got to keep an eye on it it's not looking like anything like a beast from the east at this stage and that is pretty much impossible uh, as the upper air temperature is going to be nowhere near cold enough but we could be seeing a cold easterly wind could provide some overnight frosts and much chillier conditions with of course a cold wind chill and we could see even some wintry showers for a period of time so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon